Hi guys, if you're on this channel then probably you're using Python to do data science. Uh, so do I. Uh, Jupyter Notebooks are probably the best way to interact with the data, it's the faster way to draft something up, to start rolling with the data you're having, have a couple of experiments. Also Python is amazing because you have all those libraries that make your life so much easier uh, with things like uh, machine learning libraries or just trade all the functions that are already written for you you can just import everything and then start using that right away on the data you're having uh, so that's really cool it's really easy to interact with all the kind of uh, uh, files JSONs and so on however I keep hearing from hearing from different people from, from my friends uh, about Rust for quite some time and recently there was an article in uh, Nature about why scientists are turning to Rust. Uh, the article actually is from December 2020, but I've just discovered that pretty recently. Uh, I mean, 2020 in the, in the world of science is very recent. Uh, and I have a bunch of uh, friends who are turning to Rust for the this reason of having large data sets and actually wanting to have much faster experiments done on them using data science. Uh, so people from, there's, there are examples of like a bioinformatician or uh, people doing like biology, chemistry, uh, astronomy. So generally if you have super large data sets and you want to go through that, then basically Python might not be enough because even if you optimize your code in Python, it's not really optimized. Uh, and the, the deal before was that uh, some, if you had really a lot of coding experience, you would go to C or C++, uh, but from some, for, from a couple of years ago, Rust started to emerge as a go-to language. And I've seen Rust in different contexts. Uh, I've never learned it properly. I can read some code in Rust, uh, but what I'm planning to do in the upcoming months and probably years is go more and more into the Rust direction, at least to learn what's going on. Uh, and this video is basically about pointing your attention if you're already in data science. If you're just starting, then don't worry about it. You probably just still need to just learn Python first and start doing experiments with that. But however, if you're already in a, uh, in a data science community or machine learning community, then probably you start thinking about Rust as well because uh, it might make some of the experiments faster. And there's a bunch of libraries in Rust that are emerging. Uh, so basically the community of Rust is trying to do the same thing that Python community did, which was so amazing, which is you had all those libraries that you can start using right away. And it's very easy to start uh, drafting or experimenting with the data set in Python. And the same thing is starting to happen in Rust as well, which would be really cool. So I never really get to learn C++ or C really well, uh, but I think like Rust is much easier to handle. Um, and, but still there's like a, much more steep learning curve than it is with uh, Python. Uh, the reason for that is uh, there's the whole memory management system and thanks to that you don't get many errors related to allocation of memory on different tasks, on different threads, but at the same time you have to code a little bit differently than in Python. Uh, Python just basically do one line by one line and, and that's it, and if you get an error along the way then that's it. Uh, Rust is different and you have to code differently to use it. Uh, so yeah, I wanted to, to point the, the direction into that, uh, that language. Uh, there's a cool, cool graph here about how many packages there are in general. And as you can see, Rust already have more packages than R, for example. So I, I've been talking about R versus Python for quite some time. I've never been a fan of R, but uh, R is more popular, I guess, with the economics departments and economics students. Uh, for, some, for some reason, I don't know like w why economic professors tend to use R. I think it's e maybe easy to do statistics, but in general, like you have many more tools in Python. Uh, however, at this point, uh, Rust is definitely more developed than, than R and it's much, much better, much faster to use than R. Still, R, R is of course easier, but then if I were to choose the easy language, I would go for Python. Uh, so yeah, so, so that's it. There's a, the article will be linked down below. The article will give you a bunch of examples of like what people are doing, what scientists are doing with Rust, why it's better than Python in certain examples. Um, and it's pretty cool. It, it really points down to, to this uh, Python versus Rust, 
versus R, uh, and what language you should choose for data science. Uh, good thing to consider. So thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Let me know uh, down below in the comments what are your experiences with Rust. Uh, have you done any data science uh, exper experiments uh, on using Rust? Uh, what's your experience in general using Rust? I'd be also happy to learn. Uh, if you have more materials where to point me, that'd be great as well. I try to learn and then share uh, here on the channel. So yeah, let me know and see you in the next episode.